when we talked about your previous testimony regarding uh, the stippling on the hand, we talked about uh, what you testified to at a previous hearing and what you testified here today. Uh, let me just ask you one or two questions about that topic, okay? Sure. So and you know I asked where you to, we're going. And I asked you to look at the transcript so I can see the context and not just the isolated quote. Uh, <laughs> maybe your attorney would want to do that. I don't know. <laughs> That's not a good answer to That's him. That's a bad that answer. Statement, you would agree with me now that you've seen that statement. Or I would definitely touch on that if I were the defense. Yes, that. Uh, and he didn't show him the transcript. He just read it uh, to being him. Being in such a manner so that when the cone actually spreads, it doesn't hit the fingers. That is also consistent with no stippling on the, on the fingers. Correct? Well, first of all, I don't understand the question the way you've constructed it. And secondly, you're referring to testimony in the transcript, which you won't let me look at. So you can repeat it every time if you want, or you can let me look at it. But at this <laughs> point, I don't remember the wording in it because I can't see it. Oh, he just wrecked read him. It it was something about the word I read it to stand. you. I read it to you. It was something about me now. I don't remember exactly what the wording of the sentence was. That was 2017, folks, five years ago. By the way, this is a real easy way to look really bad for no reason. He, his absolute resistance to show him the transcript is unbelievable. Yeah, every other time. Do you, do you ask? You ask him if they remember. They say no. Would it refresh your recollection if I showed you? Instead, he just represented this is what you said. Absent any other context or anything else. It just makes you look untrustworthy before the jury for no discernible gain. Unless you don't have the point. And by the way, guys, that's one of the valuable aspects of hiring a very seasoned expert witness. He knew exactly, he's not a lawyer, but he knew exactly how to make that lawyer look like a douche before the jury. Even if he ultimately ends up being right, it, it's just a bad look. Because they've seen this, you know, 15 times now in the trial. And this guy may have been well, in the... Like I didn't understand the question as you asked it. Yeah, right, I to the, no, I object to the <laughs> making any statement other than what I asked. All right. Fair okay. enough. Ask a question. I was trying to answer the question as to whether or not you have haven't asked that. a question. Then what are you doing? I don't know if there's a question pending. Ask the question again, please. Did you have a chance to read the statement? I did. I'd like to have it back so I can refer to it while I answer. <laughs> did you have a chance to read the statement? I said I did. All right. And do you agree that's what you said in a previous hearing? What did he say? The cone wasn't wide enough, but that would be another reason <laughs> for the stippling not to be on the fingers. That was your testimony at the previous hearing. It probably was, although... Uh, Excuse me, Judge, I call for a yes or no. Was it your testimony at the previous hearing? I did not review this transcript after the hearing. All right, all right. Just so if we assume the transcript is correct, let that's an just assumption. Just let him answer. Let him answer. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> this, this is totally dependent on the accuracy of the court report. This isn't like a deposition where I get the chance to review it and make an errata sheet. There's, I have no opportunity to do that. And I had, I had not seen this thing until very recently. So I can't vouch for the correctness of whether this is reported correctly. <laughs> What's your hourly fee? 